Veronica Cleary, founder and CEO of Cleary Strategies, talks to host Doug Simon on PR's Top Pros Talk. Veronica, what is the unique value that broadcast media brings to organizations today? It's more than one thing, for sure. But I can sum it up in a way that you might not expect. I think that TV is still the sexiest medium to appear on. It's most exciting. It's most visually compelling. And it's tried and true. I'm a former TV journalist, which I know we'll probably talk about. But of course, I have an affection for the medium. But it is undeniable that seeing your story and hearing your story at the same time across the most powerful way to deliver it is very important and effective. Yeah, and it's trustworthy too, especially when it comes to local news. How does your background as a TV reporter inform how you work with your clients? Well, it's a big part of what we do. I like to say that we we provide our services and that we do our work through a journalist's lens. So while being a former TV journalist is very helpful, I do believe that having any journalism experience is, in, is incredibly helpful and essential for doing great public relations work, especially earned media for your clients. I always say, I don't know how you can fully and effectively pitch a newsroom if you've never been on the receiving end of those pitches, if you've never sat in a newsroom editorial meeting, if you don't really understand the cadence and way that those environments work, and also appreciate how competitive and cutthroat and challenging they are to survive in. And so it's a part of our work every single day. And having now run my agency for over six years, I often think to myself, I should have been a producer when I worked in television because everything that we pitch, I try to pitch through not just a journalist lens, but really a producer's lens, because what does the producer need to do this story well? I want to give it to them in the pitch so that they can say, wow, what a gorgeous package of exactly what I need to make this happen. We're going to book this guest versus the next guest who might be equally qualified as an expert, but it's not packaged through a journalist lens and with the producer in mind. If you have a client, and I won't make you say anything negative, but there are some that undervalue broadcast media, perhaps, especially the way you're laying out its importance. What do you do to try and open their eyes to the value of broadcast media? It's a fair point. I I think we would be in denial if we didn't acknowledge that television is changing. And the way people consume television is changing. But that doesn't mean television and television news is going anywhere. I just read, I was just reading an update and it wasn't published by Roku, but I was reading a marketing newsletter that Roku in the next 12 to 18 months expects to have 100 million million, uh, streaming households, right? So that's Roku alone. So sure, people might be cutting the cable cord, but people are still consuming the visual medium that is television in that black box or maybe on their laptop in their home. So number one, it's being willing to be honest with them and acknowledging that television is changing. I also think it's saying to them that when we help you get on television, the value of that occurs long after the television placement occurs. Okay. So it's about getting them the clips of their placements. It's about repurposing those clips so that they can be used on social media and in newsletters. Because like I said at the beginning, at the end of the day, television is very sexy. It's very appealing. It it has a lot of power and weight behind it. So we want that appearance to live long after the show finished broadcasting. So if we can show them that we can give them, I don't know, maybe like a lot of legs from this opportunity or a lot of ways to utilize and sort of repurpose the opportunity. No one really pushes back when you put it like that. The only people who push back are the people who are maybe nervous about being on television, which is a different conversation. (laughs) Right. And we can get into the whole training piece in a moment. (laughs) One thing that we find and encourage a lot of our clients is sharing any of their TV appearances with an internal audience, because if a leader at the company is interviewed on the station, that scene is more credible than what they just might send in an internal memo or internal newsletter. You also talk about the, can I get you on TV mentality? 
why is that crucial? And is that sort of assessing someone and being like, oh, I, I can get you on TV or I don't know if I can get you on TV. Is that right. what that's about? We have to choose our clients as much as they choose us. Not every expertise, not every company, not every story is a great fit for television. One of the most important requirements is that television is a vis visual medium. Of course, we can circumvent that if we are pitching you as what we call in the industry a talking head. But it also has to be a topic that's of interest to the industry and space. And I would say that I like to tell potential clients that the better we get at our job, the more creative we are in being able to get more people across more industries and fields on television. But there are still there are still areas where breaching that sort of um, gatekeeper, if you will, that producer, right. that booker, that decision maker in the newsroom is impossible. And, you know, I have to say you don't see publicists on TV, right? Because there's not really an appetite for a lot of publicists on TV. We're the people who know how to get on TV and we're not putting ourselves there in part because that's an industry and an area of expertise where there's it's not that it's never happened. But it's not as it's not as popular or obvious where doctors, lawyers, financial experts, lifestyle experts. I mean, there, there are dozens and dozens of like categories of expertise and fields and ways that you can fit into being a good fit for TV. But there is still an area where maybe it, it might not be possible because of the thing you talk about or the expert, expertise that you bring to the table. You also have some examples of clients that you've helped navigate in this broadcast space? All of our clients are amazing. And we have a lot of TV success with our clients. I always say that we place our clients across television, radio, digital print, and podcast. But if you have no interest in TV at all whatsoever, you'd be missing out on the thing that we do best. I referred to the example when we spoke earlier that the I don't solicit a lot of clients. I like to, we do a lot of podcasts and newsletters and all these other ways that we want to tell people about us. But the one time that I solicited a client, I'll share this one example, because it's just such a great example for TV, was during the COVID pandemic, I booked my children a virtual visit with Santa. And I'm on the website looking at this company, Hire Santa. And I sent the founder a note. And I said, we really need to get you on TV right now. Do you, do you want a publicist? And we had an, we came up with an agreement. We worked together formally. And I mean, he just fit all of the criteria for being great for TV. It was timely. It was visual. It, it was a way to take the topic of the moment, which was COVID and put something, put a different spin, right? We had talked about COVID and vaccines and the health of it and all of that so many times by, think about it, it started in March. By that time, it's the holidays and it's still in everyone's mind and how cool that we could still address the elephant in the room, but do it in a way that was different and fun and still visual and still virtual. I mean, so that is up to me, one of my favorite examples. And I was so compelled by the perfection of how it fit into TV that I said, do you want to hire us? Which is really not my typical strategy. And right. thank you, he was receptive and it was ended up being a really great and fun working relationship over that time. Well, I have one not similar example, because what could be similar to Santa Claus, but the product Rain-X, I don't know if you've heard of it, which keeps your windshield clean, even if you don't use your windshield wipers when it's raining. Oh. And someone had like told me, I was like, oh, that's like amazing. I should call up the company because that would be great. They, we should get them on oh, TV. Yeah. That's a yeah. good story. Yeah. Every so and, often you are so moved. You're like, I got I to gotta see, do you want a publicist? Th this is a perfect TV story. Um, how much do you think brands are missing out if they're not thinking in terms of the broadcast opportunities and how to leverage that? I just think you're missing a, a big par portion of the market. And I think you're also missing a portion of the market if you're not also pursuing podcasts, right? Or thinking about thought leadership. Not every platform or medium is a fit for every client. And that is that is true. It's You shouldn't necessarily be pursuing all right. media. But you should, at a minimum, thoughtfully consider television. You should think through the challenges that you might have. Maybe you don't have an appropriate spokesperson. Maybe your story might not be a fit. Maybe, you know, there's reasons why you might not be a fit. But if you don't at least have the conversation with an expert who you can trust, 
because you need to work with an agency that says something to the effect, like we say, we choose our clients as much as they choose us. If you don't have that and you just have a yes, a yes agency or an agency that makes all these insane promises, then, then you might get yourself. Right. In, but if you can work with an honest broker that will really think through the challenges and benefits, and if you are a fit for TV, you'll be making a more thoughtful decision and investment in your earned media strategy. It should absolutely always be considered, even if you say, well, TV's changing or people don't watch it like they used to. People still do watch TV. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Nielsen TV Watch Report said 62% of people are watching local TV news on a daily basis, which is a huge number that they came out with. I wanted to circle back to one thing when you were talking about Santa, I might have gotten distracted a little bit, but you talked about how that could be a remote interview. Mm -hmm. That's something we advise clients is to have a good setup where their CEO, their leader could quickly jump on if there's a story they need to be pitched and respond to. Are you finding there's increased opportunity for sort of these remote interviews as opposed to an in-studio to get someone on TV if it is a talking head that they need for a specific story? The reason that we can deliver as many results as we do is because we don't have to always tell our clients to get on a plane to be somewhere live or even a train or even just get in their car, you know, whatever it is. It opens up all of the media markets in America to us in a way that it didn't before. Some media markets are a little stodgy and they say, you know what, COVID's over. We want your seat in our, we want your butt in our seats or we're not having you. But more and more often they're receptive to that. So the idea of having a beautiful virtual space that's fitting with your with your brand and message, like for example, our Santa client, he would go on television as Santa's head elf. Of and beautiful Christmas village backdrop or a Santa's workshop backdrop. I mean, it was it was the stuff that TV gold is made of, right? And it allowed him more opportunities to tell his story without having to leave his home, without having to, you know, pay, make that huge investment. And then you can take that money and invest it in other parts of your strategy. So when I say that TV is very sexy, well, you know what's sexier than that? Being on set on television because- <laughs> have an opportunity to, you know, create great social media assets and take people behind the scenes, but that is not required like it used to be. And so when it happens and it's required, we make it happen. But there's a lot of great opportunities for amazing virtual virtual interviews that still get you the win of broadcast with a lot less of a lift. Yeah. And the virtual also allows you to be on location far less expensively than if you needed a satellite truck to transmit. And I remember during COVID for a health company that wanted to promote more of its consumer base using video visits, we actually used their video interface as the frame. So the first oh. question we suggested stations should ask is, is this what it would look like if I did a video appointment? That's with very you? Cool. And it like was so effective at conveying what was going on and made it seem much, you know, got rid of the fear of doing that. And it's like, oh yeah, if you have a question, there's a button you can push up. If you need any test results, you can click here. And it just made it much more accessible to people. And even especially for people who are maybe of an age or health situation where it's not easy for them to travel from point A to point B or definitely need someone to be with them, being able to access their healthcare that way is a benefit that made it look easy. So I think it's so great that all this has opened up on the value of broadcast. Is there one final thought you'd like to leave our viewers with? I always say to people, though, at the end of the day, it's only television. I do think there is something that is very intimidating about the medium. And I just I want people to embrace it and have fun with it and not let the fear of the medium and what it entails sort of stop them from exploring it. Um, and so I, I always say to people when I can just tell the nerves are getting them, it's only TV. Like don't, don't let it, it freeze you or consume you in a way that changes the experience from something that should be awesome to something that isn't. That's great advice. And speaking of awesome, thanks for being with us. Thank you so much. This was great.